It's real, it's real. I'm back with a video that I put together. Something I was running across and it just caught my attention. But this video here is not going to be about me predicting anything. It's not about me, you know, saying, oh, this is what it is. This is what's going to happen. So, you know, this is just a video to be open mind. That's all it is, Israel. Because, like I said, they put the truth right in front of our face, you know. But a lot of people just don't want to believe it. You know what I mean? So, I'm letting you know ahead of time. I'm not predicting nothing. I'm not saying this is going to happen or anything like that. I'm just presenting the evidence and you discern. Okay? So, this video is just to be open mind. So, I'm going to jump straight into it. So, there's a movie that came out called... Angel has fallen. And, you know, those that have eyes to see understand what that's referring to. Um, we understand, you know what I'm saying, um, in the last days, you know, Satan be cast out because, you know, the world believes that Satan has been cast out from the beginning. Religion and all that, you know, the Gentiles, they believe that that um, Satan has been cast out in the beginning, but he actually is being is going to be cast out in the last days. All right, we understand religion is fake Israel. Um but this movie came out called Angel is Fallen, right? And it's interesting though. It's very interesting. I I seen this movie. And you know, there's some things in there. I'm not going to break it all down, but a few things I'm going to point out in this movie. I'm going to show it, you know. And um you just have an open mind. That's all. I, that's all I'm saying. All right. So the angel has fallen. This movie is about a guy. I guess he's a CIA agent or something like that. And um, he's being franked in here. You know what I mean? And uh, you know they framing him. Well, some people, you know, framing him. It's funny because they they the people that's framing him is in. They were military, I believe, supposed to be his friend. And he's being framed that he tried to kill the president and all that. But long story short, let's jump into it, Israel. Check the movie out and you can see more. But let's go play a clip real quick. All right, this is the scene where the president survived and he's getting out the hospital. He's going back to tell the president that he did not try to... Um, Convinced the president, you know, that it wasn't him and stuff like that. And he got to be secured and safe. So they gathered him out the hospital. But this part is interesting because he says something to the president that's, that's very eye-opening. Let's see what he says to the president. Hold on, bear with me because this thing you got to... All right, so he said the people is going to fall, but not you, right? The people is going to fall, but not you. All right. Let's see if we can get that again. So the people are going to fall, not you, right? Let's go into some scriptures real quick. I want to go into a few scriptures about that real quick. Very interesting. The people is going to fall, but not you. Keep that in mind, Israel. Let's go over to Luke. Chapter 10. And we want verse 18. Because Christ says something. All right. Luke chapter 10 and verse 18. Christ said, and he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. So he said he beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven because, you know, Jesus came to die for the 12 tribes of Israel to reconcile them back to their God. Right. Because 
they were uh, subject to death because they were all, they were sin and break the Most High's law because sin is transgression of the law. All unrighteousness is sin, but sin is transgression of the law, right? Um, and Jesus had to come and deliver them from death, the Israelites. Okay. And uh, so he had to destroy the works of the devil because Satan had the power over death. So that's why, you know, God had to come in the flesh, put on that flesh to destroy the works of the devil. And when uh, Jesus died, well, he became both the Lord of the living and the dead. All right. So but that's for another lesson. So Jesus said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. And the movie had just said that God told the president. He said, the people will fall, but not you. Let's go over to John 12 and 31. John 12 and 31. Now is the judgment, Christ said, of this world. Now shall the prince, a Satan, of this world be cast out. Because Satan wasn't cast out yet. When when Jesus when when it's, when the end times come, he's gonna be cast out of heaven with his angels, and he's gonna come to the earth to make war with the saints. It wasn't in the beginning, all right. Satan was not cast out in the beginning. That was made up in religion, okay. Satan's gonna be cast out in the last days, all right. Um, yeah. So Jesus had to die for the twelve tribes of Israel. Now the authority and power, that's why he said I have the keys of death and hell, right? Because the power um, came to Jesus Christ because when he conquered the grave, he died and the father raised him up because, you know, he was, it wasn't for Christ to be holding of it because Israel sinned. It was for Jesus to taste death for every man. All right. That's why he became obedient to death. But, um, yeah, once he, he, um, he was lifted up off the earth on, on the cross on the tree. And he drew, like he said, he said, I will draw all men to me. Right. Those Israelites that believe in Jesus Christ, that God have given him. All right. And um, so, yeah, once he died on the tree, that's why he, he, he said before he died, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head. So the right then and there, he conquered the grave, man. And. You know, the father raised them up. That's why Jesus was made a quickening spirit. So the father raised them up, Israel. All right. And. um, Yeah. So, you know, he became the Lord of God, made him Christ. All right. He made he made Jesus both Lord and Christ. All right. And Jesus have the power of death and hell now. All right. Um. Yeah, so that's what the Bible says. Whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. Okay? Now let's go over to John 16 and 11. And it reads, Jesus said, Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. See, he is judged. See? Because he is still in the lower part of the heaven, Satan. He's not cast out yet until the end. All right? Because Michael, that's why Michael got to stand up, you know, and fight for the Israelites. Because Satan is the accuser of Israel before the Most High Throne day and night. So that's why Jesus had to come of judgment because the prince of this world is judge. He had to turn Israel from the power of Satan. Let's go over to um, Ephesians 2 and 2. Ephesians 2 and 2. And it reads, we're in time past. He walked according to the course of this world, right? You walked according to the course of this world, right? Before we came into the knowledge of the truth, got to taste the good fruit of the word, right? Heard the um, everlasting gospel, right? That's what the Bible says. When you heard the, the everlasting gospel, the word of truth, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise until the day of redemption. I mean, until when Christ come, because he redeemed us what? With his blood. This world, according to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. That's Satan. Because Satan worketh in the children of disobedience. A spirit of error. All right. Let's go over to uh, 2 Corinthians 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 
verse 3 to 4. And, and Paul said, if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Who Who is lost? Jesus said, I was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He told Peter and them, go not into the ways of the Gentiles or into the, any other cities of the Samaritans until ye not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The Most High always said in the Old Testament, Israel have been lost sheep. Right? Um, so it says, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Verse 4, it says, in whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. All right. Let's go over to um, Revelations chapter 12. All right. I'm going to show you now. This is when Satan going to be cast out in the end because when Michael stand up. Revelations 12, verse 7 to 10. And there was war in heaven. You see. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was watch this. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. Showing you Satan is still in heaven. He still have a place, a part in heaven, until he's cast out. And the dra and the great dragon was cast out. Not in the beginning, Israel. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. Right, the God is where I blind the minds. He has he was cast out into where the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. You see, um, and his angels were cast out with him. Verse ten, and I heard a loud voice saying, "In heaven now is come salvation." See, that's the end when when Jesus is about to return. All right. And strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. Watch this. For the accuser of our brethren, he's the accuser of Israel, is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. You see, let's get more proof that it's talking about Israel. Satan accused Israel to the most high. Let's go over to Daniel. He wasn't talking to the whole world, Israel. Um... Let's go over to Daniel chapter 12 and verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up. See, this is when he's going to stand up in Revelations 12 and 7 and fight against Satan. That's when he's going to stand up. And at that time shall Michael stand up the great prince which standeth for the children of who? Thy people, not the world. Thy people. These are Israelites. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered. Everyone that should be found written in the book. Right? Because what was the prophecy? What, 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 what did um, what is it says in, in Matthew 1 and 1? For she shall bring forth, for thou shalt bring forth a son and call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. The house of Israel. Because Jesus is what? An Israelite from the tribe of Judah. Seed of Abraham. All right? Now, I want to go over, let me see, to another part in this movie. Like I said, just be open mind, Israel. You know, this is, I'm not predicting nothing or saying it's going to happen or believe me, this is going to happen. This, this video is just for opening your mind, having your mind open. All right. Let's go over to, um. Right, this is interesting when this guy, the ex, the the marine guy that I told you that the main star is Frank by. He says something to these two cops that he he's about to kill. Let's see. So he said, "I am what I am." What is he saying? I am what I am. What did he mean by that? See, they crafty because they like to blaspheme the most high Israel. You got to understand that. They like to blaspheme the most high. So he said, I am that I, I am what I am. What is that referring to? Let's find out. Let's go over to. Let's 
go over here real quick. Let's go over to Exodus. Exodus chapter 3, verse 14. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. Right? He said, I am that I am. This is like, all right. I am that I am. And he said, thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, I am sent me unto you. You see, they like to blaspheme Israel. You see what I'm saying? Because we already know. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, man. You see what I'm saying? These are demons, man. Devils, Israel. You got to understand that. Now, what did Jesus say too? Because those that understand who Jesus truly was, he was he's God, he's God in the flesh. He's the word. All right? And Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, it's going to get bright if I move my hand, before Abraham was I am. Right? Because why? Jesus is the word who is um, everlasting, eternity. Because he was before Abraham. Jesus created Abraham. He created all things. You understand? That's why it says in uh, Micah, I think it's Micah 5 or 2. He shall, he shall be ruler of my, who shall rule my people. Who, who is of everlasting of old. You see, that was talking about Christ. All right. So they crafty, best believe that. Now, I want to go back for a minute. It's something else he says after this. Let's see. Let's find out. All right. Just bear with me a little bit, Israel. Bear with me. So, notice he said, no matter what, Trumbull, because the president in this movie, right, he's called Trumbo, right? Interesting. Sounds like Trump, right? So, he says Trumbull is dying today. Now, if you look at, like, all the movies of, of you know, the fallen movies, Olympus has fallen, London has fallen, it's always about targeting the president. Like I said, I'm not predicting nothing, anything. I'm just saying have an open mind. That's all I'm saying. But they always want to assassinate the president in those movies. All right. Now, let's go over here real quick. This is a video that came out. It's see really if I can it. Play. So it was a play, right? Uh, of. Uh, uh, so it says President Trump gets stabbed to death in modern day version of Julius Caesar. So let's see what it shows. It's William Shakespeare's play Julius Caesar like you've never seen before. A man dressed to look like President Donald Trump gets stabbed to death on stage. Tune in to Inside Edition for more about the show and what the audience in New York City had to say about the reworking of a classic tale into a modern day story with a political twist. So, you show that it shows Trump fighting, you know what I'm saying? And it says he gets stabbed and all that stuff, right? But it's like, it's just interesting. Why are they making this type of stuff? You understand why they're doing this? All right. So that was just interesting to see. Now let's go over here. This is a art in North Korea. Right? This is an art in North Korea. Why does it show Kim Jong-un assassinating President Trump? Like you can't make this up. <laughs> Kim Jong-un 
is assassinating President Trump in the art. Right? It says North Korea leader Kim Jong Un smoking pistol in his hand looks down at the body of U.S. President Donald Trump on a red carpet next to a bag overflowing with U.S. US dollars. You see? It, it's, it's real. But if you want to read the article about it, you know what I'm saying? Just go here. But it's interesting. Like, why are they doing that? Like, you know what I'm saying? Why are they doing that? But just be open-minded, Israel. Be open-minded. Okay? Now. Uh, let me see. President. Let me see. Okay. So this is a the movie we're gonna read about. Let me see. Screenplay. Alright. This movie is which will be part two. It's called Olympus Has Fallen, right? Now I wanna read the plot about it real quick. A little bit of the plot. I think I'm going to start from. Let me see. Alright. Let's. I'm going to start at the second paragraph. 18 months later, having been removed from the presidential dental, Banning works at Treasury headquarters doing Asha's. It's funny how the man name is Asha, right? So maybe say I'm reaching, but 12 tribes of Israel, right? Meeting with Prom Minister of South Korea, Lee Tao Tae Woo. All right, Kyung Sim at the White House, a North Korean terrorist organization led by Kang Yong Sak uh, mounts an air and ground assault and captures the building. The group is aided by members of the Prime Minister's own detail, including Dave Forbes, a former Secret Service agent, Asha, and, and several top officials are held hostage in the White House bunker. Prime Minister Lee is executed on live video before being killed. Agent Roma Cole Hauser alerts the director of the Secret Servant, Lynn Jacobs, right? Notice the name Jacobs. All right. You can pause it if you want to read it over too because, all right, maybe it's not doing it now because usually when I put my finger in front, the screen gets bright. Lynn Jacobs, and, yeah, there we go, see. Angela Bassett, that Olympus has fallen, Right? Let's jump down to I think that's all I want. Yeah. So notice it's talking about what? North Korea. All right. North Korea. A North Korean terrorist group. Because the movie is about this North Korean guy invading America and the White House. Why is they so focused on North Korea so much? You know, it just makes you, it just makes you, you know, think. You know what I'm saying? Why they focus so much on that? Okay. Now, yeah, I think that's all I want. So it's about North Korea, the movie, right? Let's see. All right. Now. This is a movie scene. Let me see. This is a movie scene. Um, the guy that was framed in part three. This is a, a news thing comes on talking about North Korea. Let me see if I can skip it up soon. Mm. 
maneuvers along the DMC continue to ring alarm bells throughout Pacific Marcus, even as President Ash... North Korea, South Korea, tension, right? But mostly they're not going to really talk too much because, you know, well, let us hear it too much because she's like pouring the milk and the blender and all the loud stuff. But we know it's talking about North Korea. I don't know. Really? Yeah, I just, I thought you said, like that. Well, you know, Sweet, but he's working in the same department as her ex, Alex. Remember Alex? Anyway, Alex ended up showing up at the party, which was really weird for so they show the army, right? Now, I want to go over here. This is the part where they infiltrated. This is the same movie. They infiltrated um, U.S. Air Force. They got to jet these, these Koreans, right? They about to shoot up the people and the White House, Israel. So keep your eyes open. Bear with me. Uh, okay. Koreans up in He said North Korea has a one million uh, man army and the threat is real. So why is they so focused on North Korea, Israel? That, that plane there is hijacked by North Koreans and they are on U.S. soil heading to the White House to shoot up the White House. People just looking like, what's going on? And of course, you know they slick, so they're going to say 999, right? We know that's 666.
Yes, I believe you're good. Find my son. It's only a fine spark for the meeting. Okay. Let me see if I can move it up. Alright, let's go. As you can see, people is just dying. Americans is just, they just killing Americans on the streets. Now remember, these are North Koreans. They invaded. So, as you can see, Israel, they shot all the people up the White House, and they eventually got shot down, right? But they infiltrated and used America's own plane against them. How did they get in? That means somebody had to let them in. Somebody knew about them invading, right? I wonder who that, can that be? North Koreans, right? They just They all over the place They all here They just blowing people up Blowing themselves up Now they're about to invade the White House They People <laughs> They pretending to be people of this place. Like I said, I'm not predicting nothing. I'm not saying nothing. Anything. I'm just saying Israel to be open-minded. Okay? Just to keep your eyes watching. That's all I'm saying. I'm not trying to scare nobody. Because we know Israel, we don't fear. We, we got the most high power on our side. Okay? So, let me skip it up. So now they're invading the White House. Let's see. All right. I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, so they're invading the White House. Like I said, you could get into the to the movie more and understand more. But North Koreans invaded the USA. Okay. Now, let's see. Let me see. There's another movie that came out. I think it was 2012, I believe. It's called Red Dawn. And guess who's invading America? North Korea. But we're going to get into a little bit about the plot of it too. Let's see what happens in this scene.
So. So what do you know, Israel? North Koreans attacking the U.S. And this movie also. So it's just keep your eyes open. That's all I'm saying. Keep seeking for the truth, Israel. Keep changing yourself. Keep working on yourself. Stay in the word of God, Israel. Keep praying to the Most High. All right? And keep trusting in the Most High. And keep your faith and hope in Him. And His word and Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So, it's just... <laughs> it's just something to think about, man. But it's nothing to fear, Israel. It's nothing to fear. All right? But it's just interesting, though, right? All right. Let's move on. I'm doing this video a little late. But I felt like I had to get it out. Now. Let me see something. Now, do all the stuff about North Korea, right? There's this other movie called Iron Sky. And in this scene, they have North Korea confessing because there is about these chariots, right? Which we know Israel, what those are. Those that have eyes to see know what that is. But they come from the dark side of the moon, right? In this movie. This uh, Nazi base thing. But they're coming to take over the earth, right? And um, they have Korea in this. Everybody else, you have all like the presidents from different countries in this table in the United States. But they have North Korea in this scene for some reason, right? Confessing that it's him that's coming to invade the U.S. Right? Let's find, let's see. I swear, we do not have nothing on the moon. Japan, that is not ours. China, it is not us. But it's bloody well not ours. I confess. Yes, North Korea. Confess to what? The spaceships are ours. Our beloved leader designed and built them himself. <laughs> So, as you can see, he confessed North Korea, right? The president of North Korea confessed and said it was him and stuff like that. And you see all the rest of the nation started laughing at him, right? Like, oh, he, North Korea, what? Like, looking like they not known to do stuff like this, right? But like I said, Israel, just keep an open mind. That's all it is. I'm not saying North Korea going to do anything or anything like this. But it's to just be open-minded. I'm just presenting the evidence. And you just discern. You know what I'm saying? Just keep your eyes open. That's what I'm saying. Making no predictions or nothing like that. Okay? Let's move on. Now. Let me see. We're going to read the plot about that movie, The Red Dawn, right? But the Red Dawn that I viewed, that we viewed a few minutes ago, that was the remake because the original one was called Red Dawn, right? And they remade it, they remade it in 2012. But this is the plot for the first Red Dawn. I just want to read this part though. And it says, the film depicts United States invaded by Soviet Union and its Cuban and Nicaraguan allies. However, the onset of World War III is in the background and not fully elaborated. The story follows a group of American high school students who resist the occupation with guerrilla warfare, naming themselves Wolverines after their high school mascot. And this is the original. Like I said, this is the original movie and 
it's funny because in the original one, Israel, you see they're coming in, right? And invading. But in the original one, it's the Chinese. But in the remake, they changed them from Chinese to North Korean. I wonder why. <laughs> I wonder why. Why did they do that? Right? Why did they do that? That's that's very interesting. All right. Why would they do that? All right. Let's find out. Let's see. Let's see. Now, this is Red Dawn 2012. All right. We're going to read the top part and a little bit of the plot. All right. And it reads. Metro Golden Meyer announced its intention intention to remake Red Dawn in May 2008. It subsequently hired Bradley and Ellsworth, the principal characters, excuse me, were cast the following year, and the film went into production in September 2009 in Mount Clemens, Michigan. Originally scheduled to be released on November 24, 2010. The film was shelved because of MGM's financial troubles while right while in post production the invading army and acta- antagonists excuse me were changed from watch this were changed from Chinese to North Korean. I wonder why did they do that? Everything they do, Israel, they doing it for a reason. All right, they put the truth in movies, music, um, TV shows, and video games as well. So you always got to be open mind. Because you be like, oh man, the movies and video games and this and that. Be open mind because they show you the truth in their in their plans. Okay, they show you this stuff. They don't make this stuff movies and video games for no reason people use it only for entertainment okay but if you if you have eyes to see and ears to hear you can discern in in what they put out you understand what i'm saying so it says it would change from chinese to north korean in order to main in order to maintain access to the chinese box office right Though the film was still not released in China, it still wasn't released in China. <laughs> it still was not released in China. So, by the what was the point of them changing it from Chinese to North Korean? It didn't even make it. It was they changed it from Chinese to North Korea in order to maintain access to the Chinese box office. Though the film was not released in China, what was the point? Use your eyes, Israel. Use your ears, Israel. Remember, the Most High said to Isaiah, and and Isaiah, I think it's 6 and 8, you know, make this people's, uh, what he said. I don't want to quote it wrong. He said, verse 8, also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, the voice of the Lord saying, who shall I send and who will go for us? Then said I, here am I, send me. And he said, go and tell this people, hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and, not, and convert and, and be healed. That's why Christ said the same thing, because he was our healer. But I want to get back. So that's why Jesus always said to us, Israel, he that have an ear, let him hear what the spirit of the Lord saith. Right? Use your eyes, use your ears, Israel. All right, so it says, still not released in China, Film District bought the worldwide distribution rights in September. All right, we don't need to read that no more. But now I'm going to show you, all right, this is the remake of it. Let's go down and I want to read. Let me see. 
All right, let's read the top part of the plot, and then we're going to jump to the third part, I believe it is. An introductory montage shows the fallout of economic crisis in the European Union and a weakened NATO alliance amid increase in cooperation between an increasingly militant North Korea, because they changed them from Chinese to North Korea, and ultra-nationalist controlled Russia. The increased deployment of U.S. troops abroad leaves the mainland vulnerable. Okay. Uh, U.S. Marine Jet, uh, Jed Ecker is home on leave and spoke in Washington. He reunites with his father, spoke, spoken police sergeant Tom Eckert, and his brother, football player Matt Eckert. The morning after a mysterious power outage, Jed and Matt are shocked to see swarms of invading North Korean paratroopers and transport uh, transport aircraft. All right. Uh, let's jump down. I'm gonna jump down. Tensions build as the teens try. Tensions build as the teens try to decide whether to surrender to the invaders or resist. With Pete ending up betraying their position, North Korean soldiers under the command of Captain Cho, right? Captain Cho, bring Sergeant Edgar and Mayor, and the Mayor out to convince the group to surrender. All right, that's all I want right there. Right now, let's jump down to. All right, this is interesting, Israel. Let's read this part. The Wolverines eventually encounter Marine Sergeant Major Andrew Tanner and two other Marines, Smith and Hodges. They reveal that Russian-backed North Korean invasion used in what EMP weapon that crippled the U.S. electrical grid and military. Okay. Notice what it said there, that Russian-backed North Korea invasion used an e EMP weapon that, cr that crippled the U.S. electrical grid and military, right? Now, come with me over here. Remember, this movie came out, I believe it was 2012, right? Trump wasn't even in office yet, so that means you already know. Uh, uh, Kim Jong-un and... Putin, you know, Trump wasn't there, so they wasn't friends yet, right? Now, call me over here to this post, and let's just read the title of it. This post came out 2017 of April, and this is a real post. The movie came out 2012. Russia claims to have weapon that could cripple the U.S. Navy. Wow, do you understand? They put everything in the movies. This is a real post. Thursday, 20th, April 2017. The movie came out 2012. Uh, 2012. And in the plot of the movie, the Russians that back North Korea... Claim to have a weapon that the same words that can cripple the U.S. Navy. You understand? How they this after what? Five years later, Russia claims to have that weapon like that that could actually do that to America. Come on, you gotta wake up. But like I said. I'm not here to say anything. I'm not here to predict anything. This is just to have an open mind. All right, let's keep moving forward. Okay. So we done with the North Korea part, right? I want to get into the Iran part because we understand that the general that Trump recently killed, right? This movie called White House Down. I just want to read the end part of this plot. It's about Iran. Because if you research, so-called America always been trying to, you know, start with Iran, supposedly, right? Like I said, this is what they say. I don't believe the government and all that stuff, right? Um, and what they say, but I just use my discernment. But let's read. 
at the bottom it says Sawyer surrenders himself to save Emily. This the plot of the movie Walker blaming Iran for his son's death, right? For his son's death, the man Sawyer, uh, Sawyer, I think is the president in this movie, used the football field, uh, the football to launch nuclear missiles against various Iranian cities. Sawyer refuses while Cal sets fire to several rooms as a diversion. Tyler inadvertently triggers the tunnel explosive and is vaporized, killing most of mercenaries and freeing the hostages. Kel blows things up with a grenade belt. Sawyer attacks Walker, who uses Sawyer's handprint to activate the football and target the Iranian cities. When Kel crashes a a uh, reinforced Chevrolet Suburban through the Oval Office before Walker can launch the missile. The missiles, Kel kills him with the car's rotary cannon. Emily waves of the incoming fighter planes with a presidential flag calling off the airstrike. All right, let's read the bottom part. Kel realizes that Ralphison was Walker's uh, accomplice, believing Sawyer dead and that Cal had no proof. Ralphison is tricked into confessing and is arrested for treason. Sawyer names Cal his new special agent, taking him and Emily on an aerial tour of D.C. Sawyer receives word that Russia, and Iran, France, and Israel have agreed to his peace deal. Now, Sawyer, after learning events of the White House calling for an end to all wars. So he said, Sawyer found out, Sawyer, let me make sure I'm saying it right. I believe he's the president. Yep, James Sawyer. Sawyer is the president. And he received word that Russia, Iran, France, and Israel have agreed to his peace deal, right? It's funny when Trump come into office, it's about this peace deal, okay? What's all of that about? But like I said, keep your mind, uh, keep an open mind, Israel. All right, let's keep going. Okay. This is... Okay. Now, this is London has fallen, right? We're going to be into this. Okay, London has fallen. Let's read the plot of it. G8 intelligence service tracked down Pakistani arms dealer and terrorist mastermind Amir Bakawi. I think I'm saying it right. An authorized and U.S. Air Force drone strike on his compound. During his daughter's wedding, wedding, apparently killing Bakawi and his family. But in this first airstrike, they try to take him out. And the U.S. did this, Israel. Don't it sound familiar? <laughs> We're going to get into some stuff. So they failed because he survived, right? So they didn't kill him in this first airstrike. All right. Let's... Let's start here. So this guy is Bakawi, all right, the known terrorist. Now, it's funny. I think this is his son, if I believe. His son is going to tell him something, right? But like I said, I'm just prevent, pre presenting the evidence, Israel. I'm not saying I'm, I'm correct. I'm not saying nothing. I'm just presenting the evidence you discern, okay? It's just to have an open mind. I'm not predicting nothing. All right. Let's play this. All right, bear with me, Israel. It's almost four o'clock. Okay. All right, you don't want to play for me. Come on, I know you can play. Bear with me, Israel. Okay. Uh-oh. It wasn't acting up before like this. <laughs> uh, all right. 
So listen to carefully what he says to his father, Israel. You did well. Thank you. We need to discuss Major General Rahman. This is the wedding. So he said to his father, we need to discuss Major General. I can't get his name right, but he's a general. Let's keep going. I'm sorry. This can't wait. So he said this can't wait. discovered a German BND agent in his circle. And? That particular general won't be very useful to us anymore. He's been eliminated. So, he's saying the, the thing, his, uh, I guess his, whatever he was doing was infiltrated, right? And he said the general will not be useful to them anymore, right? He been eliminated. And then he he hands them this, it's like this, uh, I don't know, like this cloth with like a golden, I guess it's a reef, and it has like a pentagram with a circle in it, and there's blood inside of it. But notice he said the general is no more use of him. The general won't be very useful to us. The general won't be very useful to us. All Pakistani intelligence officers are compromised. One of our Afghani friends discovered a German BND agent in his circle. And? That particular general won't be very useful to us anymore. He's been eliminated. So he gives him the cloth thing with the thing in it and blood inside of it. Notice, he never gave him the name. He said, said he never gave him the name of the general, but I guess by him showing him the, the the stars and all of that and the ring with the pentagram thing, I guess he understand who it was, right? But notice it had blood and stuff in it, right? Now, let's go over here to, uh, let me see. Let's go over here to the sun. And it reads, The body of Qasim Salimani Salimani was torn in shreds by Donald Trump's missiles. And it and it was his famous red ring on his severed hand that confirmed his identity. Like I said, I'm not saying nothing, just use your discernment, Israel. That's all I'm saying. The major general who was tipped to the country to be the country's future president, all right? The major general, he's a major general, he's going to be what? The future's president was among five killed in the U.S. airstrike as he was leaving Baghdad Airport on fi uh, Friday. But it's just funny, though, because the missiles that Trump hit him with, I guess his body was torn up, but they identified him, this general, with... The ring, his famous ring. Okay. So I just thought that was interesting to put in there. And this is the red ring, I guess. But let's keep going. Let's keep, let's keep going, Israel. Okay. Let me see what part is this. Uh, assassins, Iranian general. Trump ordered... Let me see. Okay. Okay. Boy's death. Okay. I think I know what this is at. Thinking. Okay. Bear with me, Israel. All right, 
you know what? I'm going to pause it here and I'm going to come back. All right, Israel. So I just wanted to finish off at this part because I left something out. When he gave him the, the reef thing and with the blood in it, he said, this is what he said. Thought you might want to know. Don't forget his family. Vengeance must always be profound and absolute. So he's talking about vengeance, right? For the killing of the general, the general he said. Don't forget his family, vengeance, right? About vengeance. So I just thought that was interesting to throw in there. All right. Now let's get to the next part. Give me a minute. All right, so this, all right. so in this scene, this guy is an informant, right? So he's working with the U.S., okay? And he gives them, the U.S., uh, the guy that the, the terrorist guy they're looking for, he gives them his location because he's at a he's at a um, I think it's his daughter's birthday party, but this guy is going to give the U.S. his location, and what they're going to do. Let's find out. So he gave them Bakawi's location. He walks away and is going to go into what? Their drones, their weapons, Israel, the U.S. Pentagon just received target confirmation from MI6 Brown NASA. You're clear to execute. Let's go back a little bit. So he said the Pentagon just received the location from the guy, right? He said, let me make sure. So he said, the Pentagon just receives the confirmation from the guy that texted him the location. Uh, they want to go off. It's all right. So that wanted to text him the location, right? They got the confirmation. And he told them the confirmation is clear to execute. Right? It's clear to execute. Let me see if I can get back in. It's just <laughs> like I said, Israel. Just have an open, just have, just be open minded, man. Because they very crafty. So they got the location of Ka Kawaki, I think his name is. And they, he said, you're clear to execute. They're going to hit him with a, a, a drone, Israel. Did not that happen to the Iranian general recently? But like I said, just be open minded. Wow. Mm. Wow. 
that's I mean <laughs> that's that's something that's something I, I'm just saying keep your keep your eyes open Israel keep your eyes open let's keep going all right so now let's look at the video of the execution in real life so Donald Trump ordered that airstrike, right? Donald Trump ordered that airstrike, right? All right, let's keep going. Right, so Donald Trump ordered the airstrike on the general in real life, right? In the movie, the president who Trump Bell ordered the airstrike on Kawaki. All right. Just put two and two together, Israel. But let's keep going. Okay, this is okay. Bear with me. Trying to make you think, right? Okay, be with me a little bit. I gotta go back and forth with this, <laughs> but it's alright though. Okay. Okay. Now I just want to show this here. This is about the London attack here. Right? The London attack. Okay. And it's just interesting. I just put this with it. Okay, just to let's see. So as you can see, London, all the power was shut off and a bomb went off, right? Let me see. Let's read this 2017 London Bridge. Because I believe the I think part, I think that was a part two. Yeah, I think that came out 2016, I believe. But let's read. On, on 3rd June 2017, a terrorist vehicle ramming and stabbing took place in London, England. A van was deliberately driven into pedestrians on London Bridge. 
Before crashing on the south bank of the river, Thames, its three occupants then ran to the nearby borough market area and began stabbing people in, in and around restaurants and pubs. The attackers were Islamists, inspired by Islamic states. They were shot dead by the city of London police officers and were found to be wearing fake explosive vests. Eight people were killed and 48 injured, including members of public and four, shot, and four unarmed police officers who attempted to stop the assailants. All right, so this was a real, supposedly, right? Let's go over here. New images this evening from inside the terror attack in London. A clearer portrait of what happened there. People running for their lives, three attackers using that van to plow into pedestrians and then jumping out of the van armed with knives. And this new surveillance video tonight showing the restaurant manager holding the door there on the left as the attackers are pushing from the outside, armed with their knives, trying to get inside. ABC's chief foreign correspondent, Terry Moran, from London tonight. Tonight, newly released security camera video reveals the traumatic moments of terror up close. Watch as this restaurant manager hustles people inside. He and patrons barricade the door, close the front windows. One woman peering out sees the attackers, turns and runs. The manager lets more people in and then watch. You can see the attack. Now we know those that have eyes to see understand that they they like to fake attacks and stuff like that. I'm just saying they like to do that though, and they have crisis actors and all of that. I'm just putting it out there. That's all. Attackers approach, trying to enter. A terrifying tug of war begins as the Let me skip it up wielding little. attackers try. And this. Oh, this is shooting. I'm trying to keep myself safe. Photographer Gabriele Sciotto caught outside on the street as police open fire on the attackers. Other officers move in, people fleeing the scene. Those moments coming during the 18 minutes of terror that seemed an eternity. At 9.58 p.m., the attack begins. That white van runs off the road on London Bridge, starts ramming pedestrians. At the south end of the bridge, three men with long knives get out and start... It's funny, though, because I think it's in London has fallen... I think that the bridge blows up or something like that. But let's keep going. Slashing and stabbing people. At 10.08, police are called to the scene. And by 10.16 p.m., all three attackers are dead outside the Wheat Sheets pub. Their phony suicide vests failing to keep police at bay. 50 shots fired by eight officers. So they had fake suicide um, vests on and stuff. But let's keep going. Let's keep going, Israel. All right. Your orders are to deliver a message calling off tomorrow's attack. If you fail, it will be a massacre. It's just interesting, though. Like, like I said, I'm just pr presenting the evidence. <laughs> it's y'all tell me what y'all think in the comment section, man. You know, and all right. So now. This is a game, a video game called Modern Warfare. It came out 2000, end of 2019, so it's kind of recent. But this is London Piccadilly, right? And it, they're going to stop these so-called terrorists, and they have, like, bombs in the vans and stuff like that, right? Let's see. Sergeant Garrett, Roger up. Close to Garrett. Terror threat level is now critical. Possible hostile attack. Snipers in position. Negative, Sergeant. Count on Julie alarm the public. Terrorists know that too, sir. Garrick, don't turn London into a war zone, clear? Yeah, Crystal. Out. Looks like we're on our own, lads. We'll handle it. Let's get it done. Notice, London has fallen. Watch the movie London Has Fallen. Yeah, hey, Phil. Sergeant? It's up. White van. Weapons in view. That's them. Safe to Raven. White van, multiple military HMAs. Weapons visible. Moving to intercept. Roger. This attack is imminent. Do not engage. White van. Left side. Go, go.
So that's all I wanted. So it shows them killing the terrorists and the van blowing up. This is in Piccadilly, London. Let's keep going. this one okay bear with me Israel so this is interesting right like <laughs> it's very interesting very very interesting ads and stuff. Okay, let's keep going. Okay. Okay. We don't have much to go. Okay. So this part here is going to be talking about how they try to take him out, took out, try to take out on um, Kawhi. I think his name Kawaki. Uh, a little far back, which I showed you in the beginning, they try to take him out. So he's going to explain that. So he said two years ago they tried to get him, right? The drone strike to try to take him out, but he survived. Remember I told you in the beginning he survived. He survived. We didn't know his family was there. His daughter was killed. All right. So confirming they tried to take him out. Now, let's go over to... Okay. Now this scene coming up, he's going to talk to President Trump Bell. Let's see what he say to him. Sir, I think you're going to want to take a look at this. I'll put it up. To our friends in the West, whose idea of war is a remote, dusty location, thousands of miles from the comfort zone of your shopping malls. To send your poor to be blown to bits in our land, or better yet, murder our families remotely from the sky. Your time is over. So he said, murder our families remotely from the sky. Who he's talking to? USA. We're bringing the war to you. Make no mistake. So this is talking about the war. Now, we those that understand know this is going to be betrayed as the Iranian general. Right? Let's keep going. Prove it. This but we're just going to... I'm going to present the evidence, like I said. Changes forever. <laughs> Jesus. This is all over social media, too. Everybody in the world has seen this. Amir Bakawi. Number six on the ten list. So he said, Amir Kowalki. I think that's what he said. Give me a five. <laughs> Couldn't get his name right. But he said that name, and the lady said 
number, they should say number six on the 10 list, meaning they wanted him because he's a terrorist. Okay, he's on their top 10 list. And the general that recently died, he was a known general. He was a famous general. He was a high ranking general. You understand? So, said number six on the top 10 list, him. They want him. They want, they tried to strike him two years ago with his daughter, but what happened? He survived, as you can see here. But let's keep going. This man is responsible for more deaths than the plague. Sells arms to every failed state in the world. There's a vast array of connections. Terrorists, mercenaries, corporations. Mr. Vice President. So he's saying this man is one. He's he's high on the list. Terrorists. <laughs> Let's keep going. It's Bakawi. Understand if I made it difficult to track. You have me at somewhat of a loss. I thought you would have learned a lesson by now about crawling out of your hole. Never lifted a finger against you. You armed those who have. I sold triggers, Mr. Trumbo, just like you. What do you want? Your president. You can end this. So notice how they always say. They want the president, the president dead. They want the president, right? Right now. Just hand him over. That's not going to happen. Then every death from this moment forward will be on your head. Right, so you're talking about the war, war, right? Now, they killed him in real life, right? Let's see what Trump says. Imminent and sinister attacks on American diplomats and military personnel. But we caught him in the act. Let me he start over. Imminent, maybe was plotting. Imminent and sinister attacks on American diplomats and military personnel. But we caught him in the act and terminated him. Under my leadership, America. Remember in the beginning when the son handed uh, Kawaki the, the flag thing with the blood in it? He said the general has been eliminated. Right? Just throwing that in there. America's policy is unambiguous to terrorists who harm or intend to harm any American. We will find you. We will eliminate you. We will always protect our diplomats, service members, all Americans. And our allies. For years, the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps and its ruthless Quds Force under Soleimani's leadership has targeted, injured, and murdered hundreds of American civilians and servicemen. The recent attacks on U.S. targets in Iraq, including rocket strikes that killed an American and injured four American servicemen very badly, as well as a violent assault on our embassy in Baghdad were carried out at the direction of Soleimani. Soleimani made the death of innocent people his sick passion, contributing to terrorist plots as far away as New Delhi and London. Today we remember and honor the victims of Soleimani's many atrocities and we take comfort in knowing that his reign of terror is over. Says reign of terror is over. We took action last night to stop a war. Remember, he said a war in that in that part in the movie. He was talking to President Trump, Bell, right? President Trump, right? This is Trump. The president is Trump, Bell, right? Notice that. Remember, he's still Trump, Bell, in the in the angel has fallen too. But remember, he notice he said he stopped the war. Mm, did he? I don't know. Right? I can't say. I'm just presenting the evidence. So, let's keep going. We did not take action to start a war. Right? Because he was saying the war. He was telling Trump Bell about the war. Alright. Now, let's we're going to be wrapping it up pretty soon. So, let's just keep going though. Now, okay. Let's 
So I hope you just open your eyes, Israel, and, you know, see what's going on, man. Alright. Let me pause this. Okay. You know, like I said, just keep your eyes open, you know. Evidence is here. Like I said, they don't make these movies, video games, TV shows, or music for, for no reason. It tell you the truth right there. You just have to have discernment to understand what's going on. Alright. Like I said, I'm going to say it again. Don't leave me. Don't, you know, I'm not here to predict anything or saying what's going to happen. This is just a video to keep your mind open. Okay, that's all it is. All right. So now, this is the last end of the movie. And watch what they wind up doing to Kawagi. I, I know I'm not saying his name right, but you know what I'm talking about. Get on the floor, John. Get on the fucking floor! He's in this place, right? Watch what they do to him, Israel. They tried the first time in the beginning, but they caught him in the end. I thought you'd take my call. President Trump Bell. This war ain't over. This war, war would not end. You should look out your window. <laughs> oh, man, we don't get no clear than this. Look at this. Trump Bell, he's standing right there. He ordered the missile Israel. He ordered the missile to kill Kawagi. Who is Kawagi? We know who it is, Israel. They put him standing there ordering the missile. Let's keep going. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> not against flesh and blood Israel this is why we got to walk in the fruit of the spirit walk in the word of the Lord and change ourselves be washed and be born again Israel in the word of God the flesh we cannot walk in the flesh because we not we can't be carnal in this world because they walk off of the carnalness Israel we're not wrestling against flesh and blood like how we would battle you know our enemies the heathen back in the days we're wrestling against principalities of darkness, rulers in high places. That's why the Bible says, you know, the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. Understand? The word of God. You understand? Pulling down strongholds. This is how we defeat the powers that be, which we can't see with our carnal eyes. That's why we got to walk in the Lord, Israel. We got to walk in the word who is Jesus Christ. You understand? The Lord protects us. Because we can't fight the spirit. Our power is in heaven. God is our power. You understand? 
So you got to understand this is real. It's real out here. This is not just a game. They just throwing this out here. They letting you know. Okay. But let's keep going though. All right. So they wind up Trump Bell. Ring a bell, huh? Trump Bell wind up killing Kawagi, who we know that represents. But let's keep going. Let's get more proof. A little bit more proof and we're going to be done. Now, this is the real life uh, funeral of General Kasim Salamani. Like I said, I'm just presenting the evidence. That's it. And you discern. I don't want nobody to say, oh, he said he's, you know, he predicted this and he said this is going to happen. Nope. I'm just presenting the evidence. That's it. <laughs> this is just a video to have eyes to see. Just to, to see. So they all mourning him. I got his pictures, picture of him, right? Now, let's go over. Rising tensions in here. the Middle East following those explosive protests at the American embassy. Two days now, what did they do? Clashes. Now, what did they do? When he died, they went what? They went to the U.S. Embassy. And they started trying to bust in it and break in. Right? Now more U.S. troops are heading to the region. Martha Raddatz is in Washington, has the very latest for us. Good morning, Martha. Good morning, Robin. This is an embassy that is one of the most fortified in the world. And I'm while those angry actually. crowds have backed off from two days of chaos at the embassy, which was surrounded on Tuesday by an Iranian host. So they trying to get in. Look what they doing. Windows with American security standing on the other side. Apache helicopters sending warning flares over the violent protesters. The next morning, Marines forced to fire tear gas into the crowd. Over the holiday, the right. president laying the blame. So now... Let's go over here real quick. This is, <laughs> like I said, I'm going to present the evidence. That's it, right? That's it. That's all I'm going to do, Israel. Right? That's all I can do is present the evidence. You have to discern, Israel. Now, let me see if it let me get in. Okay. Now, Bear with me real quick. Now, this is the game. What I told, what I showed you about the London Piccadilly, it's the same game. Modern Warfare came out not too long ago. Israel, look what they put in there. Let's play it. They outside. The U.S. Embassy trying to break in. <laughs> and guess who they have hostage in there? Let's see. Israel. Man. The truth is just right here. You know, you got to just have eyes to see. Let's keep going. So I said the U.S. Embassy on, on the thing, right? And what do you know it? They got a guy with a white beard and they protesting. <laughs> Let's keep going. And this, his name is the wolf. The one they, they want back. That's their leader. And the U.S. people got him captured. And they trying to get into the embassy to uh, get him out. I wonder who can that be? Clear, but that 
window is rapidly closing. Look at that, Israel. Well. He said, my people will be inside. They will kill all of you. Talking to the U.S. I can still change my mind. You have to run, man. Lies. Look at that. Look at that. Remember in the movie, look, he's saying, oh, you have the wrong man. He's trying to make it seem like he's on the good side. Remember when he was speaking to Trump Bell, he said, um, I have not done nothing to you. Right? Okay, so that's all I want. <laughs> oh, it's just funny, man. It's, it's right there, Israel. You know what I mean? And then what you got? You got the the um, U.S. coming in to help them out, to help the ones that got uh, the wolf in there, who they call the wolf, right? They send a, a team in there, special team in there. Right. We have to reach Echo Fast. There are a lot of hell headed that way. But that's all I wanted to show. It just is right there, Israel. And I'm gonna get this last part. <laughs> this last part. And it's his death, the wolf death in the game. The, the wolf's death in the game. Alright. Uh, let me see. Okay. Give me one second. Bear with me. Alright. So the wolf winds up dying. Right, and I want you to notice something though. I want you to notice something, Israel. Okay. Okay. Let's start here. Wow. So they wind up shooting the wolf, who we know this is, this is, and he got a bomb strapped to him, Israel, which they're trying to defuse. And they killed the general with a bomb, with a, with an artillery missile, with a nuke, whatever it is, with a drone. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's right there. He just shot him in the head. This is their leader. Remember, they was just outside the embassy. There's people trying to get him from the U.S. The same thing will happen in real life, Israel. Do you understand? Do you see now? But like I said, you just, like I said, don't believe me. This video is just to have your eyes open. I'm not predicting nothing. I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying to keep your eyes open. That's all I'm saying. Because they, they will show you. You get, you understand? They're not sh putting these games out in these movies and stuff for no reason. Pay attention, Israel. All right? Trust in the Lord our God and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Change our ways. Turn from our sins. Walk in the fruit of the Spirit. Be washed in the Word of God, which is Spirit and life and water. And allow Jesus 
to cleanse our mind. His blood to cleanse our mind from dead works to serve the living God. And keep the faith and hope until the end that you are worthy enough to stand before the Son of Man. Because this is not a game, Israel. Our God is real. He's true. Our Lord and Savior is real and true. All right. And they know and they understand how he's coming back. That it's going to be terrible for the world, for the wicked. All right. So keep staying strong no matter what. All right. Um, and, and that's it. That wraps it up. <laughs> you know, I hope this video is very edifying, you know, and open up your eyes and, you know, whoever watch it, you know, open up their eyes. You know what I'm saying? So I love you, Israel. Um, God was willing, I will be getting back to the lesson of the new covenant with Jesus Christ. Part four will be coming up. All right. I just had to do this to bring it out. It was on my mind. So, like I said, I love you, Israel. Keep going strong, you Gentiles. Keep seeking the truth. Keep the Sabbath. Keep your hand from doing any evil. Isaiah 56. All right. So on that note, I want to give all praise, glory, and honor to the Most High God of Israel, the one true living God that created all things, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the great I am that I am, that sit on the throne of truth, justice, and righteousness, and holiness, and love, and merciful. And his word, wisdom, and son, Jesus Christ, who was made flesh, who was the word of life that created all things, who died for the 12 tribes of Israel to reconcile them back to their God, and for, so that they can turn from their sins, that they could be saved through their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of truth. So, God was willing, I'll see you on the next video. And I say peace and blessings.